Okay, so we're going to be talking about charging system diagnosis here um, today and getting into just a little bit more about the charging system. Let me get this thing all squared away here. And um, so in the previous video, we talked about the charging system fundamentals, which was components and function. And then I gave you a little bit of a video clip on charging system parts under the hood on that O3 Toyota Tundra. So today, we're going to talk about diagnosing um, a charging system. So first, the common symptoms of a problem with um, a charging system is when we get a dead battery, where we've got slow or no cranking. And you can see in the picture, this battery's obviously got a high amount of corrosion around the positive terminal. Negative's not so bad. Battery's dirty. Corrosion on the positive ter terminal. Um, Battery condition is going to be the number one cause of why you have a dead battery in addition to somebody leaving something on. But if the charging system isn't charging the, the, um, isn't charging the car because it's a, um, let me move this over a little bit like this. Sorry. One sec. So if the charging system isn't charging it because you've got bad cable connections or something like that, you might think that's a charging system issue. And really it's not. It's really just battery maintenance. An overcharged battery, well, let me just say one other thing, though. A dead battery certainly can be because you're not, the alternator's not charging the battery. And, and so that's why really the intention of saying dead battery causing slow or no cranking is your battery's weak because it's not being charged properly. Second, an overcharged battery can be, can be signaled by the fact that you've got electrolyte all over the top of the battery. I mean, you've got all kinds of white deposits on the top of the battery and you may actually be believe it or not boiling the battery because it's getting too high a voltage and that can be caused by a defective voltage regulator or a diode in the alternator that can overcharge the battery and this is pretty rare you don't see it very often but headlights will be super bright and I did see one that was holding 16 volts and the headlights were super bright and the battery water was coming out it was actually boiling out of the battery and there was white uh, deposits all over the top of the battery. Um, and, and the reason why it says this can be signaled by a low battery electrolyte is because you're boiling the electrolyte out of it. You're actually uh, causing the water to come out. Abnormal noises can be a sign of a defective alternator. Uh, a bad uh, front bearing in particular. The rear bearing is a smaller one, doesn't carry as much load. The front one is the one that the when you take an alternator like this, the front bearing, which is right behind this pulley, is getting all the force of that belt pulling down on the alternator. Okay, so that's going to cause us to cause that, that bearing to fail eventually. So any kind of grinding, squealing, or maybe a buzzing noise could be something inside the alternator, typically a bearing, but, this, but diodes and some other things can make noise. If your indicator light on your dash is illuminated, so your battery warning icon is on, that means that your charging system is not charging the battery. It's not a battery problem. It's a charging system problem. Or like the O3 Tundra we saw in the video um, that has both a dash warning icon and the voltmeter um, could be an issue there. So those are some of our symptoms. Dead battery, overcharged battery, abnormal noises, charge indicator light on. Okay. So visual inspection, what do we want to look for? So the first thing we want to look for is loose battery cables. Okay. So if they haven't been tightened, I guarantee you don't have a good connection and they're not going to be charging right. Corroded terminals, like you see in this picture here, a very corroded positive terminal. So we know how to clean that with, um, with the scrub brush and we can take uh, baking soda and water and neutralize the acid. We can take our battery brush and clean uh, the battery, we did all that when we did the battery service. So battery service is super important to the starting system, charging system, battery system. Okay. Low electrolyte, somebody's not kept the water full, and um, the low electrolyte level is going to be a cause of, of um, uh, a, a battery that's not charging properly and, and, and not being charged properly. Okay, so we've got to keep the water full. Uh, a discharged battery just because <clears throat> um, we may not be in charge. So we're going to go look and see what the condition of the battery is. And if this battery's got a low state of charge, then we're thinking, hey, maybe the alternator's not charging it. So a damaged battery case, 
Um, this can happen. Somebody goes four-wheel driving and the battery gets pitched. Um, a lot of times the clamps that come across the top of the battery, uh, they rust away because of the acid. Um, and uh, they corrode away. And the consequence is that the battery can get pitched into the fan and then maybe start leaking electrolyte and then it's not working right. Um, the belt tension and condition. So we're going to look at the belt tension. And on a V-type belt like this, if we push in the center of the span between two pulleys, we should get no more than a one-half inch of deflection. So it should deflect down one-half inch. We measure it with our tape measure on a 12-inch span. And so if it's a six-inch span, we only want a quarter-inch deflection. Um, on the serpentine belts, if it has a serpentine belt, we have gauges to measure those, the depth of that. And... Um, I think I'll remind you of that and pause the video and go grab one to show you. Okay, so I've got a serpentine belt here. This one's obviously in really bad shape. You can see the cracks and so on. The correct way to check this is to take one of these gauges and you lay this into the into there and you're supposed to be able to see, if you turn it like that, see the orange gauge or feel it. If it's flush like this one is or recessed, the belt grooves are worn by the pulley and this belt needs to be replaced. Okay, so first here's a serpentine belt that's obviously really cracked and you can see all the cracks and see chunks missing out of it. So the Gates company that makes belts and hoses has these gauges. I'm gonna show you two different styles. Here's one, and when you put this in the groove of the belt like that, and you turn it sideways, you're supposed to be able to see the gauge. And if you can't see it, that means the grooves are worn by the belt to the place that it's um, sinking too far in there, so this belt needs to be replaced. They also have another style of gauge that just has these two little plastic ribs. And if I put this into a brand new belt so you can see it, hopefully, and put it into the grooves there. And you're not supposed to be able to wiggle this around. Here's a worn belt, that was a new belt. Here's a worn belt, and when I, let me get my thing untangled here so I can do this properly, okay. So here's a worn belt like this. And when I put that one in there, now I can move this guy all around. So I know this belt is worn out. So the group, the, the, the uh, pulley grooves will eat, or the pulley um, teeth, so to speak, will eat into the belt, and that's what causes them to go bad. Let's continue along here. So next is wire condition. So we can look at the wiring harness and the, the wires underneath the dash and see if a rat's been eaten on them or they've corroded away or some kind of thing that happened so we don't have a good connection somewhere. Here's a picture of an old school belt tension. Um, or just showing belt tension. It says take moderate thumb pressure in the center of the span and you're supposed to have no more than one half inch of deflection. That is the belt being pushed down, so like this, right? For a 12 inch span so if there's a six inch span from pulley to pulley you should only deflect a quarter inch okay so one half inch deflection is maximum for a 12 inch span and these are just showing some different types of belt problems showing that normal some cracking is considered normal and and that's okay when they get uh, weird cracks like this you want to replace it or any of these type of conditions where the belts are starting to disintegrate from oil or debris or being burned, we want to replace them. I will say this, even though they say some cracking is normal, what I usually find is when the belts are cracked like that, they're super dry and they tend to be noisy and squeaky. So we like to replace them to get a nice soft rubber belt so it wants to ride smoothly and not make so much noise, okay? Um, this is just showing you how to adjust a belt. This is a V-type belt, I believe. And it's got a lock nut, and we're going to loosen the lock nut, then pry the alternator out and tension that belt, and then tighten it up. More modern cars, everything is, um, as you guys remember, is um, spring-loaded. So we've got spring-loaded tensioner on the belts. 
And most Hondas and Toyotas don't do this anymore. This is kind of an American car thing. They will have a, uh, a tensioner device where you loosen a lock nut and you turn another bolt, and that puts... Okay, so sorry for cutting myself off there, but um, that little tensioner was used to adjust the belt tension. So next is charging system running voltage. We can take a voltmeter like I have here in the picture, and we can measure at the battery terminals. We put the red lead to the positive terminal and the black lead to the negative. And we want to see somewhere between 13.5 to 15 volts. And on the screen there, it says 14.35 volts. That's pretty normal, usually in the low 14.1, 14.2, 14.3. We're going to measure this with a DMM, which is a digital multimeter at the battery terminals. And that's going to be to verify that the the charging system is actually charging it's a it's kind of like taking your pulse it's not the best test but it does give us a quick indication with a voltmeter that the battery is being charged by the alternator um, lastly we can do what's called an alternator output test this is like putting you on a treadmill and stressing your body we can stress the alternator with this machine to measure its maximum current output at 12 volts um, uh, we i'm just showing this to you, but normally we only do this in Auto 2. <clears throat> I'm just showing you that it exists so that you know there's a little bit more technical and specific and accurate way of testing an alternator to make sure the charging system is working correctly. Okay, so those are the things that we want to consider when we're diagnosing a charging system.